Good evening. It's so good to see everybody. It's so good to be here. Um, this is Conversations in Black Freedom Studies. Um, so I'm very excited to announce tonight's panel. Um, coming locally to homegrown favorites, and that is Robin Spencer and Mary Phillips. Both. Uh, and finally tonight, we are very, very lucky to have Erica Huggins here with us. Erica has come. So please join me in welcoming Robin Spencer, Mary Phillips, and Erica Huggins to the Schomburg. And in particular, I put those uh, terms together because those were oftentimes the terms that were so central in these women's lives. And also because when we remember this past, we tend not to think about it in those kinds of ways. Women being arrested, right? the role of political violence and state repression in the lives of Panther women was very, very central. Janet Cyril was a leading figure in the history of the Black Panther Party in New York. The Panthers' history in New York is related but separate from its evolution in Oakland, California, and those nuances and differences are a story waiting to be told. Janet Cyril is you, she is me. It's my pleasure to say her name and to say, share her story. So in the spirit of Janet Cyril, Sophia Bukhari, Rosemary Mealy, Candy Robinson, Norma R. Moore, Pamela Hanna, I say the names of Panther women alive in the spirit world uh, tonight. Thank you. The leadership of women including Harriet Tubman, Ida B. Wells, Amy Jacques Garvey, Rosa Parks, Gloria Richardson, Mabel Williams, influenced radical female activists of the 1960s and early 1970s. These women laid the foundation for black women's activism in the Black Panther Party. By 1968, women represented over half of the party's membership. 1968 to 1969 was a pivotal period for the participation of women, specifically due to the FBI's counterintelligence programs increased political repression on the party. Women were involved in all aspects of party activities and community programming. One particular incident that is worthy of noting occurred on March 21st, 2012, when Rakia Boyd was killed by an off-duty police detective in Chicago, Illinois. Her murder occurred when an off-duty police officer approached a small group of young adults, which included Boyd, in an alley from his personal car. Failing to identify himself as an off-duty police officer, as he approached them about loud noise, Boyd and her peers decided to walk away after a verbal altercation. There's a beautiful picture here that I'm looking at that was there, I hope, of Rakia Board with a, a smile that's so high wattage. I can't imagine why we don't get to see that smile. The part of me that doesn't want to understand that there are systems that really do not see each of us as human, some of us as human, but not all of us. That's why Rakia is dead. So you see, there is something about not being able to kill revolution. It is a natural order of things. It isn't just in people, it is in nature. And since people are a part of nature, the goodness cannot be stopped. Uh, Thanks for coming out tonight. <laughs>